What's up, people? This is the People's Podcast presented by the Wrestling Republic. It's your boy, Young Michi, a.k.a. Scooney Mag, a.k.a. Young Twiggy, a.k.a. the Bay Area Wrestler on the come up. And my co-host is the beast that sleeps in the East, the one, the only, the phenomenal John Wiley. What's going on, people? Man, we got a great show for y'all, man. We're going to start off. So much has happened in the wrestling world. We're going to get into a little bit about AEW. Um, We're going to talk about Extreme Rules, the pay-per-view that just happened. Give our review on that. But let us start off with the Bray Wyatt return. And Mm. matter of fact, before we even get into a whole theory about that, just tell me what your thoughts is, John, on Bray Wyatt returning back to the WWE. Well, first of all, I don't know why we had him lose the Goldberg and just disappear. Like, I don't think that was a good idea. And then on top of that, he's he's been a necessary piece to WWE. And it's been kind of it's it's like, man, there were slots to put him into similar to. Um, to Adam, a.k.a. Uh, Braun Strowman, like there that they just need to slide him into that they would have been perfect for it. And we just didn't do it because he wasn't on the roster. Hey, man, I don't know why we got rid of him in the first place. I'm glad he's back. I'm going to say I'm glad he's back, too. Um, Yeah, I don't understand why he ever had to leave as well when he was with the Fiend character. Like, it was all the downfall, like, man, with Goldberg. I am not going to lie. I'm a huge Goldberg fan. But when they had the Fiend lose to Goldberg, it just it was a downfall from there. A downfall effect. Um, But. Bray Wyatt's back now. And then this is an interesting theory I recently seen. So they were talking about the different characters, a part of the Firefly Funhouse. Um, And then the theory is, is that going to be part of a new Wyatt faction group? Because the people that appeared, the minions that basically appeared um, before his return, before we actually got to see Bray Wyatt, the theory is is that going to be a new faction or was they just kind of used to kind of build up create like a more of a suspense that bray wyatt's returning what's your thoughts on that i think this is probably going to be a new faction because i've noticed like a trend um every time triple h has brought somebody back they've always brought back somebody with them or if not a group when hit row came back he they got everybody except swerve we understand with that and then uh zelena came when zelena vega came back she brought back uh, Santos Escobar in them. And then we fast forward. And um, the only person that didn't come back with a group was Johnny Gargano. But Johnny Gargano don't need a group. So I honestly think one of the minions that showed up with Bray Wyatt is Bo Dallas and some other guys that we uh, probably missed. And I'm willing to make it back. One of them is T-Bar. Mm. Just because you know, we need him to do something. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think th- I think those are those are some familiar faces we're gonna be seeing. What do you think? I will hope that it is a big Wyatt faction right now. Like, you know, it's interesting. It seemed like at this time in the WWE, the factions are starting to come back. When I think of like the Imperium, of course, you got the Bloodline, you know, taking over the whole business. And then if the Wyatt family also come like a new Wyatt family, pretty much a new Wyatt family faction, it would just make it way more interesting, especially because Bray Wyatt's character is so mysterious. And so like, you know, you, you need that in the WWE, like you need characters like him. I'm an Undertaker fan. And because we don't have an Undertaker, we don't have a Kane no more. We don't have a uh, Mankind you need that role kind of filled in. And I feel like Bray Wyatt with the Fiend character and with all these different characters that are part of the Firefly Funhouse, it would just make the WWE even more interesting and um, a faction that's just strange, that's different. Like oh, to yeah. Me, yeah. I mean, if AEW can have them gimp clowns, man, they WWE can sure we have some god dang what's it called monsters and demons like we used to man there's another theory too though that will make this mm. even more interesting like Tell me. now the theory is now this may be a reach so recently right after the extreme rules pay-per-view seth rollins and Liv morgan both blacked out their twitter uh profile pictures and then they 
have been seen to follow Bray Wyatt now on Twitter. So people, you know, fans are speculating, are is Liv Morgan and Seth Rollins possibly joining this faction as well? That's the that's the theory. Like Seth Rollins and Liv Morgan are about to do a whole new character reinvention. And because they're following Bray Wyatt on Twitter now and because they blacked out their profile picture, they could be a pos- they could be a part of this new Wyatt family faction. What's your thoughts on that one? It kind of makes sense. It kind of does. And on top of that, you could have a a, a heel for you uh, tag team uh, uh, tag team group go at it because uh, you know Alexa Bliss. If you follow her at all, she's been talking about Bray Wyatt nonstop. Like I want to work with him again. And if you notice, she still kept the doll from when she was working with them and it's still available to be sold as merch too Mm -hmm. so if they add Seth Rollins and uh uh, what's it called Bo Dallas to that group as well I think that's a pretty stacked faction I will probably want to watch that it just yeah yeah. now I I was gonna say yeah that would be a stacked faction like come on now Seth freaking Rollins Mm -hmm. and he just lost to Matt Riddle like I mean it's not that that does anything wrong to his character. It's just like it will be a good time for a reinvention, though, like just even more of a darker character of Seth Rollins to me will be even crazier, um, even deeper into the descent of madness for, for Seth, because Seth is already proving his character is currently very insane. So this would be perfect. Exactly. Exactly. So it would just be insane. And then he. Seth Seth Rollins is a superstar. Adding him with the Bray Wyatt and just the creativity of the Bray Wyatt character, it would just be it'd be insane. And then Liv Morgan, I'm a fan of Liv Morgan too. Matter of fact, since we're talking about that anyway, what's your thoughts what? of that match with uh Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey at Extreme Rules? I'ma keep it a buck with you, player. I got up and made me a sandwich and forgot it was on. <laughs> All I got to know is I saw the ending. I was like, oh. Liv Morgan was champ for like two months. Cool, I guess. <laughs> but uh, no, I'll go back and watch it because I have to. I have to know was it a good match? Or not? I'm curious. I well, watched them. I watched the match. Um, I mean, it wasn't a bad. It was a. It was a solid match. I'll say it's a, it was a solid match. Um, to me. There was no way you can book Ronda losing that match. Um, it's an extreme rules match, like, and it's Ronda Rousey. Like, oh, yeah. there's no way you can have her losing to Liv Morgan in that match. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Liv Morgan had a good title run. I would have wanted to see it continue, but when you have her facing Ronda Rousey in an extreme rules match, it's like. There's nothing you have to make sure Ronda wins that match. Like, I don't understand how she, unless somehow Liv just forms a new group and they all just dominate and take Ronda out. The only thing I would say about that match is, though, there was times where it seemed like uh, they would use the bat that Liv Morgan came out with. And they were using it a little too much to me because they weren't really hitting each other like super hard with it. Like, of course I'm just saying like the selling could have just been a little bit better. Cause if you swing in a bat to make me really believe that you guys are really, you know, hurting each other with a bat, you gotta, you, you gotta kind of lay it in, but I understand why you wouldn't lay it in. You, you want to be careful. Cause uh, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a match on a TNA where a guy accidentally got hit in the head with a bat. And it messed up his whole weekend. You know, he was seeing stars and everything. He needed to get stretched out. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, when you have a bat, ever have a baseball bat and ball, man, you got to be careful. In fact, uh, remember when Scott Hall and Kevin Nash came on to WCW and they brought out the bats? Mm-hmm. No. Nah, okay. Okay. Well, I'll just could let you know like this. The TV executives and everybody was like, you know, don't bring out the bats. It's dangerous and way too violent, man, you know. They brought them anyway. They got them ratings. But, you know, the bottom line is, though, you got to be careful because you can't hurt somebody with them. Exactly. And then the tough part is when you're using a bat, 
you got to be careful. But at the same time, if you're using it, you got to make it look like you really using it. So that's the yeah. tough part. And that's why I was like, I felt like they were overly using it because it was like, Rhonda, you you not really hitting her with this bat right now. Like, Rhonda, you could take her head off. I know you could take her head off with that bat right now. Like, come on. Yeah, so, Beach, like you using you an athlete, man. You played almost every sport. You know, can can you uh can you can you fake a bat hit, man? Can you can you do it? You got them skills like that? Um here's the tough part I will say. I feel like when you use things like bats, specifically with a bat. With a chair, you can use a chair because obviously that's what's been used over years and decades in the wrestling business. When you use a bat, though, it's a little tougher, though, because if you're swinging a bat, it's kind of hard to make that look very real while also not trying to hurt the other wrestler. Like, of course... You just, I don't, it's, it's a little tough. I feel like, I mean, that's why I, that's why I feel like it's a little criticism towards Rhonda and them. Like, cause even for me, I will probably need to practice that a lot where I can swing it and actually make it look real. There's a reason why Triple H used the sledgehammer the way he used it. He wasn't just swinging it because he knew if I swing it just a regular way, that you would normally swing a uh, sledgehammer, it'll be tougher to make that not hurt. Yeah, or <laughs> exactly, you would actually hurt somebody. So he made sure he used it in a certain way to make it look like, okay, how can I not hurt the wrestler but still make it look like I'm hitting him with this sledgehammer? Exactly. That's the tough part. So with the bat, it's almost in the same way. You got to make sure you using it in a way that's believable, but that's not going to hurt the wrestler so you can't just swing it like you would normally swing it and that's how they were kind of doing it at times they were swinging it like you would normally swing it but they were doing it you could tell it was super light so it was like oh, okay just put the bat down like please yeah. just sit it down just stop using it i understand why it's tough to use it so yeah other than that though that's that would be my only criticism of the match i like what ronda's doing and of course i just i mean you know, fans could be mad that Ronda's champ again, but to me, it was no way she could be booked to lose that match. Oh, yeah. I feel like that was the only right decision. Now, I still need my Ronda versus Shayna Baszler match. God dang it. Mm, Ronda and Shayna Baszler. That would be another, you know. I feel like that's, I don't know, maybe that's like a, do you think that's a WrestleMania worthy match? Yes. That's a WrestleMania worthy match? Okay. Yes. I think it's WrestleMania worthy, or if not Survivor Series worthy. Worthy, mm-hmm. just on the simple fact that with oh a later on match like Matt, Matt Riddle versus Seth Rollins is able to do. So yeah, one hundred percent. What other matches stood out to you with Extreme Rules? Well, first things first, I got to talk about Karrion Cross versus uh, Cuz, aka Drew the man who keeps losing the Roman, aka the man who beat. Brock Lesnar, Drew McIntyre. The way I look at Drew McIntyre, man. Speaking of weak shots, don't ever pick up them goddamn straps. I like me some strap mats. I like watching what's it called? Bret Hart versus Kevin Nash. Great strap match. But, man, the one they had in that ring was something to behold because at times I hate that match at times I love that match because god dang it made me miss Stone Cold Steve Austin because let let your girlfriend try to stop me at any moment mm. she going through a table mm. it's not a thought it's not a thought it's gonna it's an action it's gonna happen because god dang it you are stopping me from stopping a mud hole in your in your husband's chest man it's god dang it and the same goes for Rhea Ripley, because I know it's Rhea Ripley. I don't know if you watch Raw or SmackDown, man, but you know, she be sometimes just attacking dudes left and right, and everybody just be freezing up like, what do we do? It's a girl. Do I hit her or not? Like, bro, what a Dudley boy said, man. Get the tables. Get the Put tables. Put right through it, man. It's about time. <laughs> don't don't freeze up. She got in that ring. She knows she should have signed up for. What you mean? Rhea Ripley so, buffered in most rest- dudes right now in the WWE. Oh, yeah. You compare you compare her to Adam Cole. It's a night and day difference. Who's in the gym? But that's not a shot at Adam Cole, though. It's not a shot. But um, 
But uh, like I said, though, man, I thought the men, speaking of weak shots, they were so you know what they do. They pick up the straps and they start, you know, hitting each other with it because you know it's equivalent like getting hit by a belt. Mm-hmm. There is a moment in that match where both men are hitting each other with these straps. And I had to feel embarrassed, secondhand embarrassment. This is almost as bad as watching Eddie Kingston and whatever Japanese bum out there just going back and forth with each other, slapping each other in the chest like, man, this is hype. No, no. These are two grown ass men looking ridiculous. And we're already watching wrestling. God dang it, man. But I digress. I did like the match. It was actually pretty good because of the fact we brought up the we made sure to pay attention remember that that uh drew McIntyre was injured previously we did we did we use um carrying cross's um girlfriend mm-hmm. or um, excuse me or a uh, partner we use we end up using her in correct moments to, to stop and impede drew McIntyre in critical moments and then on top of that we made them look like good heels dastardly and powerful I would like to see where the storyline goes next. And I hope Drew is actually okay. I hope that wasn't like a real injury, but that's what I get for not looking up every detail on SmackDown. That's my fault. My thing is, I just yeah. feel like Drew needs some help. Like, who's going to come help him? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. They need to figure it out. Like, he needs some help. Like, to me, every match that he's been in, it seemed like this entire year over these last few months, he just gets cheated out of the match because they the other team has the upper hand because they got a whole group or they got a bunch of people that's just willing to help the main wrestler like from Roman and then with the bloodline. And then now this situation, I'm just like Drew has been getting dealt with like and I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't have the same exact effect of a Seth Rollins to me when he loses. It kind of it makes me look at drew like it doesn't make me look at drew like obviously because drew's a great wrestler it just makes me look at his character and being like i feel like he needs something else i don't know like he doesn't have the same effect as seth rollins to me seth rollins could take all these l's and to me seth rollins is still a clear superstar drew taking these l's to me it'd be like it'd be i don't know it just kind of it doesn't have the same effect it doesn't have the same effect for me. So I'm like, Drew needs some help. I don't know what they got to do to help his character or just get him a partner. He needs something that's going. And plus, I'm just sick and tired of seeing him lose these matches by getting cheated out of these matches. Like similar to what you were saying, if a woman would have stepped in front of Stone Cold, she was catching a stunner. It was no way she was going to catch a stunner and the fans would have loved it. Nowadays, I, I I do get that we are in a different time period, um, but something has to change. Something yep. definitely has to change. Get the table, dog. Get the table. I'm not saying we got to give her a spy piece special. I'm just saying that table's right there and not being used. I'm just saying go get the table. It'll solve everything. Man. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, all I know is Drew needs some help. The match was the match was cool, but Drew needs some help. Well, what do you recommend? Because I say we should uh, unite Europe, get Sheamus, go get the Imperium, and be like, "Hey, y'all try to interrupt any of my matches." Hey, man, I got the full support of Europe on my side, and I got some brawlers, and I got some got some got some savages on my team. You know. Look at the Imperium. You got Walter or Gunther, as you want to call him. And then you look, you got Seamus and you got his friends, which has Pete Dunn. That's that. That is a pretty strong faction. If Drew just decides, I want a whole crew, Drew can be the dude. I'm just saying. Uh, that's a tough one for me. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the Brawling Brutes. And Imperium is dope the way they are already. Like, since we're already talking about them, I just want to say this about that match. Every match that they have been doing lately has been five-star matches to me. I got to give Sheamus his credit. I got to give Gunther his credit. To me, Imperium with Gunther, I'm predicting this now. 
they will be the biggest or he will be or that group will be the biggest heels in the company at some point in the future. And he will be the champion, the world champion at some point. Um, now, let me talk about Seamus. For years, I haven't given Seamus his credit. I finally got to give Seamus his credit. This dude is on a different level. Like, I, I actually, I'm more, I'm, I'm just happy the fans are cheering him and cheering the brawling brutes, like, because that's the way I feel. I'm like, dang, Seamus is dope. Like, I have not given him his credit his entire career, and I'm just like, this dude is putting on these hard-hitting matches. Yeah. Chest super red, taking all these chops, yeah. and just keep going. And I'm like, this dude's dope. Okay, I got to give it to him. He's it dope. Was, it's, but I believe it was like 2018, 2019 when him and Cesaro teamed up. That, they were a very good tag team, and they were having some some, some underrated matches, man. So, you know, that could have been another guy that could have been in Drew McIntyre's uh, European group. Oh, man, we shouldn't let him go either. God damn it. But uh, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, I think pairing those guys up was the best move that they could have made. But, you know, all good things have to come to an end eventually. But uh, do, do you think he, Sheamus is WrestleMania worthy to have a match? I will say... For sure. Sheamus is definitely WrestleMania worthy um, of having a match right now. To me, him and Gunther has made the Intercontinental title back. They brought back the prestige. Mm -hmm. They the title is worth something like whoever needs, you know, whoever comes after them and becomes Intercontinental champion that works their way up of defeating Gunther or whatever the case may be or defeating Sheamus if Sheamus becomes the IC champion like it would actually do justice for that person's career like they are the intercontinental champion again like it means something so I feel like Sheamus this man is putting on five star matches they're they're literally putting on five star matches at every event and they're basically starting off the show at every event so I'm like and then they're making it hard to follow up for all the other uh, wrestlers that's coming after them. Like, they don't even have to be in the main event. They're not even close to the main event, and they're putting on five-star matches. And yeah, I'm pretty sure those that are booking these matches, like, they know that they're going to start off the show great. They're going to make sure the fans are in, you know, the fans are still hyped up for the event. So, Sheamus definitely deserves an IC. Uh, I mean, he deserves... A WrestleMania match. Um, it just got, I guess, trying to figure out what that match should be and who should it be against. Because I doubt, you know, he's still facing Gunther going into, you know, WrestleMania season. Like, that would be, now that would be like, I'd be like, dang, they dragged this on for that long. But he's definitely worthy of having a match. I just, I don't know who do you put him against, though. I would say it'd be a great match for him to. If Gabriel Stevenson can get out of can, to, to, can get into wrestling shape and all that jazz, I think he'd be perfect because they can have a hard hitting technical match, or we'd have to find another big man that he can wrestle to have a hard hitting match with. I wish I could say that man would be almost, but almost is a uh, he's not quite there. He's not quite he's not quite put together yet, which is kind of tragic. Is almost but, still wrestling? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's still there. It's just that um. There, there. He's a, he's a work in progress at the moment. Work in progress, and I feel that almost is still very necessary to keep around and still work with. And I feel like he, we just gotta, we gotta, we gotta put him together the right way, and then he he'll he'll take off. I believe in almost pretty much. You believe in almost? I'm gonna just wait and see because I'm like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about almost right now. Because but I'm gonna it, give him it, a chance. It took, it took a like a lot of other wrestlers. I feel like it's gonna take time to make them that guy. And right now we're in the era of WWE where we can see potential. It just takes us a minute to get there. Gotcha. What do you think about the Bianca Belair match with Bailey? Boy, if that's not female John Cena, god dang. 
we have Black John Cena finally, aka Bianca Belair. God dang, that woman is strong, physically and booked. Like she running people over, man. I I don't know how they're gonna do it, man. But they kind of they kind of written themselves into a fantastic corner with her because she ran through da uh, damage control pretty easy. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, hey, man, who's going to be the chick to, st to stop her? Because uh, we we got a female Hulk Hogan walking around. Man. Is it, what do you think? What do you think, Mitch? Honestly, when I got done watching that match, I was just like, Bianca Belair is the GOAT. That's all I was thinking about because I was just oh, like, the God. way they booked her. And then I feel like it's deserving, though. Like. She is exactly what you said, the female John Cena at this point, the when John Cena was beloved, um, you know, before John Cena got into that era where he was being booed and cheered. But yeah. I feel like I feel like it's deserving to me. Like it doesn't look like she would lose to Bailey, honestly. Um Yeah. I mean, to me, Bianca Belair is just on the at the top of her game. She's at the top of, you know, the women's division. And the big, I mean, the bigger question to me is who should she face at WrestleMania between Charlotte or somehow should they have her face Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania? Because I don't want to see her lose to Charlotte, man. I'd rather her lose to Bailey. And it's not, and it's really because of the fact that I like, I'm still thinking about all the events that happened last year and the year previous with Charlotte. And I feel like giving her the belt is like, I don't want to see that, man. I don't want to see that. Yeah. But I won't. I'm not going to sit up here and act like, you know, Charlotte isn't a fantastic wrestler. No, it's, not, it's not the point. I think uh, Charlotte needs a, a reinvention of her character, come up with something new and try to make it as interesting as possible. Because if she comes back doing the same thing on Ric Flair's daughter, hey, man, it's cool. It's cool. We just know what we're going to get. Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, I think obviously I'm a Charlotte fan. Um, I do believe Charlotte was winning the title just a little too much at this oh. when she was going through her run. Um, Did you say Charlotte's the greatest female wrestler right now uh, on the planet? Didn't you say that? I think I don't feel like that's a stretch though. I feel like she is when she's competing full time. When she's actually a part of you know the company, I feel like. She is probably the greatest in ring, you know, female wrestler. Um, I feel like now though it would be a little bit more competition with Bianca Belair on the scene. Obviously, I'm a huge Sasha Banks fan. That's who I feel like is the goat, no matter mm. what. But you know, Sasha obviously is not with the, you know, she's doing her own thing right now. So, I mean, I feel like a Charlotte versus Bianca Belair would be a dope WrestleMania match. I feel like even Ronda Rousey versus Bianca Belair. I mean, I feel like you can't really go wrong with either one of them, even though they're both the champions of, you know, Raw and SmackDown right now. Um, somehow, if you was able to book that for WrestleMania, Ronda versus Bianca Belair, I feel like you can't go wrong with that either. So it's oh, just yeah. whatever Triple H sees fit. What about uh, what about the Edge and Finn Balor match? I think narratively speaking, that was the best match. Be I just feel like it was just a little bit overbooked. But I feel like narratively speaking, it was the best match and one of the more creative matches due to the fact they they went that felt like a match that you had seen in the nineties because they went everywhere, man. They were battling in the crowds, they were battling on um set pieces, they were battling in uh everywhere, man. And then on top of that, I like that the that they kind of remember Edge ain't gonna give up for nothing, and this is this is far from the worst beating we've seen Edge get. So, so this is like I love that match, and um, the only gripe I have to complain about that match is two things. One of the things is uh, my God, please, please, I understand it's an I quit match, but we don't have to keep putting this mic next to these crew two grown men moaning. And grunting every five seconds saying I'm trying to say I quit. Cause god dang man, I wasn't feeling it. But the next thing I have to bring up is uh 
Rey Mysterio at the end of that match getting folded and then look being on the ground for forever while Edge is over there getting um getting violated by that group because it's like it kind of reminds me of uh you know when um Triple H uh was was going off against Randy Orton and Randy handcuffed him to the ringside mm-hmm. and ran and Randy was going to directly off uh, off of going after um. Stephanie, yeah, you know, like that. That whole setup reminded me of that, and I was just like, "Man, huh. how, how, like, how to, how to, how history repeats itself." And I was like, "Thinking this is great." And then my thing about it is like this: Ray has been on the ground for like I want to say about like ten, almost like five to eight minutes. Where is Ray at, man? And then what makes things just a little bit worse? Is just like we had another one of those moments where Rhea Ripley's doing stuff. We just got to look at her now. Like, like I said, man, let this have been Rock. Let this have been Undertaker. Let, wait. Let this have been Brock Lesnar. Let this have been anybody else. She would have she would have caught something. Or let this have been the Dudley boy. She would have been going right through that table. God dang it, man. And, and it's like, once again, you just kind of freeze up and look at her. Because we know Past Edge. Past Edge would have speared her. Well, mm-hmm. we, let's not forget about ECW one night stand. It speared the mess out of uh, the East that one that uh, what's it called Tommy Dreamer's wife. Mm-hmm. He knew he wouldn't have cared. Like, come on now. So you know that's just how it is. But um, honestly, other than that, no, I like that match a lot. Man. Very good match. Very good match. Gave us a good gave us a good reason for why Edge would say I quit. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the match, man? So my thoughts on this match, I will feel, I mean, I feel like this is one of the best matches on the card. So I, if it was me, I'm going, I'm going, uh, the match between the brawling brutes and Imperium probably as my favorite match. And then I'm going edge and Finn Balor, you know, that match as being my second favorite match on the card. Um, the story that they were able to tell, Obviously, like this story is going to continue. Um, I feel like I just love. I mean, I love matches like that where they go into the crowd. Kind of gave me that old school feel. Michael Cole was going off on the freaking commentary. Shout out to Michael Cole for stepping up. Um, and like, I just felt like it was that was a great overall match. And then the it was actually a great ending too. It was a great ending. Like I feel like that's the only way we can see uh edge saying i quit because you know having to do with his wife pretty much so yeah. with beth phoenix and then they still hit her with the concerto though that's the shady part though and that's what adds to that's what adds to the rivalry even more because now it's like what's about to happen next you know edge about to turn it up even more now so it's like what where are we going from here it's about to become even more vicious Oh yeah, but I feel like Edge needs a a partner. Like I don't feel like this Rey Mysterio partnership is really helping him right now. It's <laughs> most likely gonna be AJ Styles because Finn. If you watch Monday Night Raw, though, Finn Balor has been trying to hit up AJ Styles. AJ Styles like no, 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 and no. And I feel like this would probably be the the perfect third man to that group would be able. It'd be the old man group, but it'd be like yeah, it'd be the perfect trio to go up against them. It's probably leading to that Survivor Series, uh, a Survivor Series match. And didn't Triple H already say that he's planning on having like the, um, what's the name? Like what? It's going to be the War Games Arena. Yeah, the War Games. Like he's planning on having War Games at this year's Survivor Series. So I can see, I can see them doing that. I can see probably like an AJ Styles with Rey Mysterio. That would actually be pretty sick. Like. And, and a war games my match? only issue with those kinds of matches because aew kind of highlighted this where when you have that many people in a ring it's 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 it makes it things literally very cluttered or my favorite we're gonna have people look stupid aka we're gonna be on the ground for an absurd amount of time because we need one guy to get his stuff off mm. God. and then before well, we I'm a, mm-hmm. yeah 
I was going to say, before we even get into more about AEW, I was going to say that the last match, but did you have anything else you was going to say about that? Oh, man, uh, to me, that's my favorite match. Hey, man, first things first, good job, WWE. You brought in Daniel Comier. Daniel Comier has been on on TV, podcast, wherever, just saying, I want to be in the WWE. He loves wrestling. This was great for him. Bring him back again. And on top of that, I like how he was in the ring and he was commanding respect or, you know, he's directed to. Mm-hmm. And I liked it because it's like, you know, are you really going to go attack Daniel Comier, man? I'm just saying that's not a good idea. And then on top of that, I love how this was a match catered to Matt Riddle because I don't know if people know this. Matt Riddle was in the UFC and he has an eight and three record. Pretty good. Um, And the thing about it is once I saw this match stipulation, I was like, there's no way that, uh, Seth Rollins is winning this because this is not set up for him to win, not at all. And I'm happy that him and that that Matt Riddle and Seth got the main event, man. I thought that was great. I think um, personally, to me, this is my favorite. This is my favorite match because I like I like the theme. I thought it was perfect for this pay per view, and then I thought every little thing they put together for it was special. I want that ring, that. That steel cage, I want that in the, in the next 2K game or put it in this one, man. Got to be there. Yeah, definitely agree with you. This was definitely a fire match as well. Um, Seth Rollins, I mean, Seth Rollins is just a superstar to me. Like, he, he can take losses and it don't affect his character to me at all or don't affect the way that I look at Seth Rollins. Like... And to me, this is a match. I seen some like uh, fans complaining like Seth Rollins deserves better. Like, don't get me wrong. I did go on and a few other podcasts and say he deserves a championship. But I don't feel like he was treated wrong in this. Like, he wasn't supposed to beat Matt Riddle in this type of match. Do y'all know who Matt Riddle is? Like, come on now. Like, Matt Riddle is legit. Just like Bobby Lashley and uh uh brock lesnar those are legit dudes you do not want to fight and then and then seth rollins got choked out like and he just i mean and he actually fought he had a fight he fought against it for as long as he could like it it i mean i don't feel like seth rollins got treated any bet like any like worse in this match or anything like that just because he didn't win seth rollins still looked great i just hope i mean i feel like we it is it does nothing a, uh, bad for Seth Rollins and I feel like it, it hopefully I don't know if this the end of their rivalry but if it is then Seth Rollins won most of the matches in the rivalry so you know Matt Riddle deserved to win this one and it makes the most sense yeah. so I'm glad they're just not like because oh man you're just giving me you're giving me thoughts of like what if Vince was in charge oh god Vince would have probably made this man lose Vince would have probably pushed him down to like catering at this oh god yeah. i'm so glad we did. i'm so glad triple h is in charge i'm so glad he is yeah. any uh any more thoughts on this on the on this pay-per-view man how would you rate it man four star five star a plus b plus what you think man? um i'm probably going it's a, it's t- i'm probably going like b plus like a b plus like i mean it dang there could get an a but uh it's I'm going, it's, if I had to go stars, I'm probably going like overall, it's a four, four out of four out of five stars for sure. I would say four out of five stars. Uh, for me, this is a uh, same similar B plus. Only reason why I say it's a B plus. Hey man, where the hell is Roman Reigns? Oh. Why aren't the WWE titles being put on the lines? What's going on here, man? Something ain't right. Something's missing. Where are the Usos even? That's that's my only right, really. Other than that, though, everybody put on a good performance, man. Even though I did have some some criticisms, I feel like you, those are quite minor compared to the overall product. So yeah, good job, good job, Triple H and WWE. You entertained me for a good three hours. Yes, sir. So let us go ahead and move on. And let, matter of fact, since we're already kind of talked a little bit about aew just let's go overall let's just talk about where do we feel like aew is placed right now in terms of everything that's going on with the company like it's been so much that has happened over these last few weeks months what's your thoughts overall like we even hear about the sammy Guevara thing like what what's your overall thoughts with the company right now 
First of all, I need I want some more transparency because there's people that say they leaders, but we got so much chaos. We looking like this, we looking like the god dang uh, what's it called? Golden State Warriors, man. It's looking like chaos and anarchy going on backstage, man. Fix it. I don't care if you gotta fire somebody, you gotta take somebody's, you know, executive vice president rolls away, but god dang it. It is as tragic, but at the same time, though, it gets you traction. It makes it to where people want to tune in and see what's going on. There is no such thing as bad publicity. But at the same time, though, this sounds like a lot of toxicity going on in the background, man. Fix it. Because I understand I like Tony Khan. I really do. Because of the fact he really, he truly likes wrestling, man. He's healthy for it. But. I got to see Tony Khan become the law, man, because I guarantee you, we ain't never heard this much wildness going on backstage with the WWE, at least back to back to back like this. Because it's like, all right, we first had Sammy Guevara and Eddie Kingston doing, having their thing. All right, let's fast forward. Now we got the CM Punk situation. And then let's go back with Big Swole and Tony Khan. I'm like, bro. What is going on? And then on top of that, we got to also bring up the Matt Hardy head injury and the Jeff Hardy going going into rehab. It's like, bro, it, it, it sounds like everything is fun and fine out there, but it sounds like it needs a little bit more law and order going on in there. And that's, that's, that's just the bottom line. I want AEW to be successful because I'm tuning in now. So my time, I need my time to be valued, but I also want it to be successful because I would love for people to have like an alternate route. You don't like where it's going on in the Indies or you don't like what's going on in WWE. You got a place to go. You got a place to go that can help make you a star or at least, Hey, help you take care of some things that are important to you. And that's the, and I feel their placement in wrestling is like, they're the number three, they're the number three show on TV and they're the number two promotion. And it's only getting bigger and better every time. But I feel like they got to get some things under control, man. Man, the best thing about AEW right now is MJF. MJF leaves that company. I don't care what anybody says. I said this before on a previous podcast. And people was kind of getting in the comment section saying like, yeah, well, maybe if he if he leaves, you know, they probably not going to get the same ratings. No, they're not going to get the same ratings. Nobody's probably going to be tuning in. It's going to be even more dramatic because if he leaves, he's going to the WWE. No questions about it. Triple H is killing it right now. Bray Wyatt is back. The WWE is just on a different level and they're going further and further. The storylines is getting better and better. We about to have a freaking war games match at Survivor Series for the first time. Like, I just feel like WWE is on a, such a level. You let a man like MJF, who's your best homegrown talent, go to WWE and Cody Rhodes hasn't even returned yet. It's just so much like AEW is, I don't know. Like, I guess one question is if it was, if you was running AEW and you had the opportunity to bring back CM Punk and the Young Bucks. Would you bring them back? Yeah, I'd do it. I would 100% do it. I know a lot of fans are clowns right now. I want to be like, let's see a buck ruin everything. But let's be honest, bro. The the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega put themselves in that situation, and they forgot who the hell they were. And they forgot what privileges, and they forgot what responsibilities they got. And that's just the bottom line. So yeah, I would bring them back, but stipulations are you gotta act, you gotta act like you were an executive vice president, and you gotta make moves like one. Don't just be on TV with your friends because you want to just you know hang out and be the top guys. That steams nepotism, in what's it called? Egotistical, bro. Fix that. And then yeah, would I bring uh, CM Punk back on TV? That's not even a question. Yes. Because you know damn well that CM Punk is going to spin that so well. Oh, my God. He's going to put eyes back on this. Because, you know, that's the best thing about CM Punk. Let him be in a little bit of drama. He'll turn this into the drama. So, yeah. 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 For me, I don't know if I'll bring back CM Punk. Honestly, I'll bring I'll bring back the Young Bucks, but CM Punk, I will want to bring him back. Similar to like the Warriors right now Ooh. with Draymond taking, you know, Superman punching Jordan Poole. 
because of Draymond Green's talent and because of CM Punk's talent, I would want to bring back CM Punk. But at the same time, chemistry matters. What time heals all wounds. Time heals wounds, but at the end of the day, we're going after championships. We're competing against the WWE. So it's like the locker room presence does matter. And CM Punk, for most of his career, hasn't had the greatest uh you know relationships with the wrestlers behind the scenes. Now, of course, it doesn't seem like he was getting in fights with the in the WWE, but it's just like it doesn't seem like everybody really likes CM Punk like that. And I I like CM Punk. I'm a fan of CM Punk. But if I'm AEW and all that just transpired and the things that continue to transpire, it's like at some point in time, you kind of got to try to build that locker room presence. And um, so personally, if I was AEW, I wouldn't bring CM Punk back. Even though he's great and he's talented, he would spend it. He would bring back the fan. Like, he would do so much great things. Sometimes you got to just be like, is it best for our company? Is something else going to come from this? And I, I look at it like this. CM Punk helped elevate MJF in that company because he did the one thing I wish they would do with a lot of XWWE guys. Use their popularity and fame to bring up people that no one's ever heard of. Granted, I believe MGF would have been popular without him, but I feel like it helped. It helped put a rocket on his back to get to get to get even more mainstream. Yeah, I mean that's why you you hate that these situations happen because when people are super talented, you want them to be there. Um, maybe you're right because at the end of the day, like when you think back on Shawn Michaels and his career at some point in time, like Shawn was completely hated, but oh yeah. His talent superseded all of that, so you made sure you you keep him. Um, but it came to a, even a point in time, Sean had to take a break, and then WWE brought him back. So with CM Punk, if I was AEW, you you can't just bring him back right away. Like you got to give that some time. And granted, he is injured now, so maybe that is the time you need. But you kind of got to in this time period, you got to set some ground rules. You got to let people know, like, I know you already have rules, but you got to really let the the talent know, like, we ain't, we ain't, we're not tolerating any of this anymore. So, yeah, yeah. So, right now, I wouldn't bring CM Punk back, but maybe a few years, maybe like a few months down the line, probably, uh, you know, I may change my mind. But at this point, you got to, you got to set the culture. You got to set the foundation a lot better if you're AEW. So, I'm gonna just I'm gonna let CM Punk go, but I'll bring back the Young Bucks at this point. I'm not bringing back the Young Bucks, not until they can they can get that get their egos in check, bro. Because like I said, if uh, I'm an ex- if if I'm an executive vice president, bro, and I gotta and I gotta do what's best for business, I'm not gonna do anything as stupid as kick down somebody's door or, or engage into a fight like that. I'm going to be as real as possible and being turned into a businessman and switch it up and be like, we got to talk about this. And if you got issues, holla at me, but getting into fights with your employees, that's a lawsuit, bro. You got to check yourself. That, that ain't cool. That is true. That is true. That's true too. I don't care. It don't matter who's in the wrong either. Cause at that point you make the situation, you mess up the whole program for everybody. But that wasn't happening before CM Punk arrived. Even so, imagine it like this. Hey, what if I'm your boss, Beach? And I'm like, bro, you over here killing it, but uh I want to be champion. You're gonna look you automatically our dynamic is gonna change. Mm-hmm. You can't have the inmates running the asylum, bro. It don't work like that. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and you know, this kind of reminds me of when Hogan was running was uh, running stuff at TNA. Hmm. It kind of does. And the reasoning why is because I can just see, like, because I have hands in this or people got to go through me in certain situations, it just makes things kind of, like, rough to look at. I say, and look at look at AEW when the Bucks and Kenny Omega wasn't around. It's like, hey, we're they're doing technically better. So, hey, maybe we got to let them go. People, let us know who you, in the comment section what y'all think. 
what would you are you if you AEW and you're running a company are you bringing back CM Punk are you Don't bringing back the Young Bucks or do you're bringing back both how are you handling this situation bring back Kenny leave the Bucks on the street bro don't you let them let them keep their clown show in the indies bro Young Bucks will probably go to WWE I'm just saying like don't bring them what do you just, want them to do just get jobbed out to the young to the Usos the Usos got to lose to somebody at some point. Shoot. Let that be the hurt business they lose to. I got another question right here. So, yeah. what about what about what about Alistair Black and everything that's going on with him? Like I seen a video he posted and he were, you know, he was just kind of kind of like just super frustrated going off. What was your thoughts on kind of like the video he put out? Uh, going uh, against the media in a sense. I feel like that was a totally right video to put out just to be as direct as possible because I, the media is always terrible in every sense of the word because of the fact they're not out there for your best intentions. They're out there for their, for their best intentions. Grand example would be Adam Schefter in the sports world when it comes to like uh, baseball, football, basketball, that jazz, and how him and Woj would just make the worst moves possible when it comes to tweets or releasing information or having their own opinion on something. And then it either a not being true or B more damaging than it could be. And I feel like if the wrestler himself or the, the athlete, the, the guy is telling you directly, don't believe anything anybody's saying until it comes from my mouth, then yeah, respect that man's wishes. But you know how people like to do things. You listen to your Dave Meltzer's and they're going to run and spin a narrative that should not be listened to. You know, it's a fantasy. It's not a reality. Yeah. For me, I would say. I mean, I feel like he. Yeah, I feel like he kind of handled it the right way. He said he needed time to just kind of work on himself, work on, you know, behind the scenes with his family and everything like that. So people kind of trying to, you know, tell uh, how what's everything going on in his life without really knowing is just going, you're going too far. I'm a fan of like, I watch a lot of sports uh, analysts and then their talk shows, their podcasts and listening to like the Stephen A's and all that. They say, you're not supposed to really go and start talking about the person's personal life. That's when you cross the line. And that's when I feel like it is like you, sometimes you just got to let them be. I get it. They're celebrities, they're wrestlers, they're in front of the whole world, but sometimes you just got to let them, you know. And in his case, he already did put out a whole post and a whole letter about, you know, he just needs time to himself. And it's like, you just got to respect that sometimes. So I definitely understand where he was coming from. Um, you know, we're going to end up doing like some rapid fire questions. Um, so we're going to start off with what is our thoughts on wrestlers in social media? And wrestlers participating in social media, like, are we here for it or are we against it? What's your thoughts it on is, that? It is a gift and a curse, man, because you'll get beautiful moments where you can see the fans actually di directly interact with their favorite wrestlers. And oftentimes, somebody's day will get made, and it's a great feel-good story. At the same time, though, you'll also get some situations like Seth Rollins back in the tw 20, 2018, 2019, when he got into an argument with a bunch of indie clowns and in jobbers, like, come on, dog. They ain't, they ain't on your level. They ain't moving like you do. Don't give them any spotlight. Don't do that. Because now you're just going to put a little extra money in their pocket. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then, um, and then you get issues like this where you can watch somebody have a whole entire mental breakdown on social media because they can't put that phone down, too. So I think, personally, what they got to do is get rid of it. They'll say it was all headaches. Get rid of it. It's such a weird thing. Like in the past, I will say I was against it because I'm everybody from if by the, by the end of all these podcasts or some point, you're going to understand Undertaker's my favorite wrestler. So Undertaker being that being my favorite wrestler, obviously I'm more of a, a kayfabe type dude. So and during this era, having social media, you kind of get rid of that for the most part. Um, everybody is, you know, we know so much about everybody in the past, which we didn't really know. So 
But because we're in the era of social media and this is a different age, I feel like you you kind of got to have it. The thing is, is how can you use it to your best ability to um, still showcase these wrestlers as who they are? So I feel like more wrestlers, if they're using social media, they got to stay in character, even on social media platforms. Um, Certain wrestlers don't need it, though, like. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, with a character like that, you kind of got to, you got to, you don't need social media. Like, you don't, I don't need to know the real version of you. You got to kind of take a, take a, take from Undertaker and be like, Undertaker just was like. Stay in character. He was in character his whole entire life, basically. Like, not only during his time, there wasn't really social media until, you know, well, Undertaker was and eventually became a part of that era too, but he still was always in character. So when you have a character like the fiend, like Bray Wyatt, when you're just like a creepy type person, you got to stay in character. So you probably don't need social media unless you're going to stay fully in character. And you got to, you're going to be very limited in how you use social media. Um, but I feel like it's 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 doable. It's just the wrestlers got to be able to use it in a certain way to make it, you know, viable, viable, basically. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, I understand it's your social media, bro, but you got to don't don't Kevin Durant this situation. Don't do it. Yeah, we shouldn't really know too much about your personal life like um and if your personal life is completely different than your character, then it's like uh, that's when it becomes too much. Like, I don't know, because one of the best things about watching wrestling is we suspend our belief. So oh, yeah. that's part of the job of fans. We're supposed to suspend our belief. But when we know too much about you, it's it takes away from that a little bit. So. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the Roman Reigns commercials where he's like being a dad and stuff like that, but then his character on TV is supposed to be this badass character. You know, it kind of it kind of really hurts the situation, man. And then it's still going on to this day because you can see on Roman's YouTube channel, it's a lot of well, Roman's supposed to be this, you know, the one tribal chief, but then you go to his YouTube channel, he's doing interviews and talking to Logan, I any mean, Logan Paul or whatever. And it's just all cool. He's being himself. Like, come on now. Oh, and one other thing. I don't like when wrestlers go on these platforms and talk about their character. Like, do what MJF did. When MJF got an interview, he stayed in character. Like, when he got interviewed by Ariel. um, I forgot his last name. But when he got interviewed by Ariel, like, uh, he stayed in character but also answered questions out of character. But you couldn't tell if he was... Like he 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 made it seem like he was who he is. Like what you see on AEW when you see MJF, that's how he stayed in character. Like I don't like when wrestlers get on these radio shows or talk shows and then they're like, you know, they're talking about their character as if like they're just playing that character. It's like, come on, man. Like I don't I don't like when you do that. I get it, but I don't like it. Yeah. It's like, imagine Abyss. I don't know if you remember him from TNA, just, you know, getting on a talk show, just talking normally. We know Abyss is supposed to be a monster. Like, come on now, fix that. Yeah. And then, but then it also can benefit it, though, a little bit, because Roman Reigns, people seeing Roman Reigns, who he really is as a person, makes you like Roman more. So it's like, during a time when Roman was getting booed, then if you got to know the real Roman, it's like dang, I can't boo this dude. He's actually a good dude. So it can work in both ways, I guess. But I don't know. Personally, if I had to answer the question, um, I'm kind of against it. Kind of against it. Yeah. Um, the second rapid fire question that we're going to end off the show with, did WWE miss an opportunity on not turning John Cena heel when he was at the apex of his run? Yes. Mm. But the real issue would have been if we turned John Cena heel, who would have been the baby face? Because it sure as hell wasn't going to be Randy. Mm. Who was going to be the guy to step up? Because Batista was in and out the company. And Daniel Bryan quite didn't quite take off the as yes, quick as we needed to. And then CM Punk as well, CM Punk. I'm going to say they did miss out too. I feel like yeah. Roman Reigns being a heel 
and being at the top of the company, you need a huge heel. And John Cena would have been the biggest heel as well as he became the biggest baby face. But I feel like yeah. you need to be able to produce a big superstar baby face. You need that top heel. And John Cena, we already seen for years of him being the top baby face. If you would have turned him heel, you probably would have gave another opportunity for someone else to become that big number one baby face for the company. Um so I do feel like John. I do feel like the WWE did miss out on that too. They dropped the ball, man. And then it's because because you know what kind of reminded me of like when when John Cena didn't need to be the good guy was when he when he crushed the Nexus. Mm. Remember when like it was it five to six guys jumped him and he still beat him? Like come on, dog. We gotta fix this, dog. Yeah. This is too much. So yeah, I feel like they kind of missed it. And it's it's weird because you could see John working heel against uh Rob Van Dam back at uh back at ECW. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, well, the ECW pay per view. And it's like John knows he can work heel very well. And then he's also been healed before with the Doctor of Thugonomics. Now the real question have been what kind of heel would John come back as? Because I would love for him to be in the 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 company man. Because mm-hmm. I think that would have been great. I feel like you could do so much with John. I don't know. I mean, you could have made him one of the leaders of the authority at the time or something like, I don't know, just even now you could bring him back as Hill and do something with him. Um, but no, yeah. you, you know, what's be, crazy about that is, uh, never the, the, I remember the night you got me to watch wrestling again. You know, this is when there was like a random shield appearance, but, the it was like AJ Lee was like in charge of the uh, SmackDown, I believe. And John, was like, and she was like making crazy decisions, but John kind of 180 was like incited with her mm. and uh, and was gonna do it exactly what she, what she told him to do. And I was like, this should have been the this, or when he lost to the rock, should have been the, the, the catalyst to him turning heel, but they didn't do it. Okay, so before we move on to our closing statements, I gotta say this for the people tell us your thoughts. Did John, did the WWE miss out on John Cena? on turning him heel when John Cena was going through his, you know, his at the apex of his run. When before John Cena started really even getting booed, did WWE miss out on turning John Cena heel? And that could have like even done a little bit more for the company. Um, I personally say yes. And John also says yes too. So uh, before we go though, you got any closing words for the people? The only thing I got to say for the people is, hey, whatever you're working on, whatever you're trying to, to succeed at, keep at it. Because it's only a matter of time before you hit your stride. And also, Raiders, please prove me wrong and beat the Chiefs. I need some, I need some good news, some hope for this team, man. Because this is looking sorry and sorrier every week. Because we beat, and because the, the only team we beat was the Broncos. And that's a damn shame, man. Get it together. Raider Nation. And I'm going to end this off with saying I got on my Lakers hoodie. I, 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 and uh, the NBA season is coming soon. Um, tell me y'all thoughts. I know we talk about wrestling, but also tell me y'all thoughts on Draymond Superman punching Jordan Poole. Um, I mean, that is, I mean, that might as well be a wrestling topic. Roman Reigns does a Superman. Whose Superman punch was better? Is it Roman Reigns or Draymond Green? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just saying. And when Draymond hit Jordan Poole, Jordan Poole kind of flew like he was in a superhero movie. I'm just saying. And again, no, man. Roman, that's the one hit of quitter sometimes with Roman, man. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to go Draymond Green's punch is a lot better. His Superman punch is a lot better than Roman. I ain't seen Roman knock out anybody. And uh, it looked like Jordan Poole got taken out. I'm sorry, Jordan. He didn't have to do you like that. I know you was not expecting that from one of your leaders. but Hey, hey man, like they always say, man, keep your guard up at all times, man. Yeah, sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you got to put on your shield. You got to put on your shield. Shout out to Roman Reigns. But that that's all I got to say for the people um make sure y'all leave comments uh make sure y'all let us know oh wait what's going on over here <laughs> but let's make sure that y'all giving us some topic uh some topics to debate 
Um, leave some comments. We're going to go over the comments next week. We're going to read those comments, all those good things. This is the People's Podcast presented by the Wrestling Republic. And we out.